these are almost like the, the slippery ones. Like good dense piece of pork right in the middle. Then you have a nice wonton and like just slides down your throat so quick. It's gone. Good morning everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here coming at you from Hangzhou, China, the tea capital of China. Today what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you to eat a delicious Hangzhou style Chinese breakfast. It's my last morning here and I cannot wait to fill up on some delicious food. I've already been to a few of these spots, but there's also a few other ones they told me about, they look amazing. Then after that, we're gonna go back to my apartment, grab all my bags, and then go to the East train station and take the bullet train back to Shanghai. There's three train stations here. The east one's the best one because it has the most bullet trains per day. The bullet train only takes 45 minutes to get from Hangzhou to Shanghai. I'm going in business class and it cost me 210 yen, which is like 35 US dollars. And the reason why I'm doing it is because I like it. You know, it's more luxurious. Uh, you know, you have places for your bags and it really feels like you're in like outer space. Like I'm in a, I don't know, like a spaceship in an Avengers movie or something, you know? It, it really feels different. And yeah, let's go do that. I'm hungry. Are you guys ready? Let's go. Right now we're inside the old town and this is where Hefner Street is, which is like a pedestrian only street. I visited last night and made a video about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm walking actually on the outside of it, on the area where it's all restaurants. And I know there's a lot of restaurants here. They look really good. There's actually one that's uh, like a Middle Eastern one. It looks really like, oh, here it is. I think this is it. This is it? Look, they're doing like culture. So basically, as you can see, it feels like I'm in India. Uh, they're doing like Amatari Kulcha in a way. A little bit like that. I mean, it's just big, like a big, um, you know, flatbread with different vegetables. You got like some sesame seeds in there. You have some, what is this? I don't even know. There's so many different things. I just don't know what they are. I mean, it looks good. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Black sesame. Spring onions. Remember, here in China, you gotta always hold like this. Never actually touch the food with your hands. Super disrespectful. It was good. Super crispy, very airy, as you can see, little holes. Mmm. I love the black sesame. It gives like a, almost like a chocolate taste. So good. Mmm. Hey, how you doing? Everybody, everybody loves me here. <laughs> And like I mentioned guys, this is the tea capital, green tea capital of China. So we got green tea with flatbread. Mm, I love that you can actually like just eat the tea. Take it down. Mm. Way too hot. I'm really enjoying this. You guys see the chef right here in the front of the restaurant. He has a dough. He's rolling it up, you know, rolling it out. The flatbread, you know, he, he basically makes it like super thin so they can make it very crispy. And they put it into like the big, um, like a little big oven, sort of like how they have it in India. Mm. So this with the tea cost 6 yen, so one dollar. Good way to start the morning. It really is unique having black sesame. It's so different. If you're into spring onions and black sesame, and you like bread, you'll love this. Mm. Oh, it's just too hot. Mm. Too hot. Take care. Bye, bye. That was really good. It wasn't really filling, but it was nice. Black sesame was just like a different world. And here we have another spot, looks really good. And this one was the one they told me about that's some of the best like bread, but it's like thicker bread. That was like thin, crispy. Here they have like big, thick, almost like cakes, you know? So I'm getting one of these big fluffy cakes and it costs two. I don't know what's inside, we'll see. Okay, Okay, so it's like a super fluffy bread. Okay, so it reminds me of like a, a biscuit in America. Like if you go to a McDonald's, you get an egg biscuit, like an egg biscuit sandwich. This is the biscuit. Very dense dough. Mmm. 
We got some onions in here. There must be egg in here, maybe some custard. Mmm. Really hard to get through. Mm. Oh wow. Very nice, loving, dense, a little crispy on the bottom. Ooh, I think it's too much though. Might have to get like one more bite and that's it. Mm. It must have custard. It's a little sweet. I mean, you don't taste it like a big glob. It's not like oozing out. But for sure it's here because it's a very sweet biscuit. Mm. All right, I'm gonna save this for later. Let's continue this food tour. Ni hao. Ni hao, ni hao. So the biggest issue here is that, you know, because of the language barrier, you don't know what you're eating. So you have to really look and see what they're doing with it, like how they're making it, and then you decide. So like this one I saw, it was dough, and I saw a few vegetables, and I saw some stuff there, and I was like, yeah, you know, it looks good. Now we're gonna go inside. I'm gonna go to one of my favorite spots now, because those two spots were just some random spots that they told me about. But let's go find the most delicious like tofu sandwich of all time. Hefn is a street that's made up of like souvenir shops, a lot of tea places. They have like a big pharmacy here. They also have like a lot of like beef jerky, you know, pork jerky, like forever kiosk here. So kiosk in the middle and then shops on the right and the left. Like right here you have like shoes, never any shoes. But at a certain point here's another street where the McDonald's is. So the McDonald's, you make a right and you go all the way down to the gate and next to the gate is my favorite spot. And this is called the Royal Street. This was the main street when Hangzhou was one of the ancient capitals of China. And as you can see, I mean, like on the right you have shops, then you have huge like sidewalk, right? And then you have like little streams because there's actually a stream that goes through here and it connects and it's like, the way they built it is pretty cool. It just goes through and it keeps going and going and going and going. And it like separates the street a little bit. So in one side you have you know, shops, sidewalk, stream, sidewalk, shops. The Royal Street is beautiful. And they have actually probably the most expensive shops here because there's a lot of silk shops, a lot of like handicraft shops, but everything looks very, very expensive. But I mean, the main attraction on that street is for sure the stream that goes through it because this is like a very ancient stream. What I was seeing, what my guide told me yesterday is that stream has been here forever. And obviously they just made it better and made it you know beautiful. And then as you continue through here, you can see sort of the depiction of what this place was, right? You saw this yesterday. So like the houses, bikes, and then over here, yeah, right there, we have the gate. And beyond the gate, we got some more food. This was the entrance to the old town when this was the capital of China. When it wasn't the capital of China, they converted into a drum tower. And if you wanna go up, between 9.30 and 12 you can go up, and then 1.30 and 4.30. It's just turned nine, so we might not be able to go up, but if we're here after 9.30, we'll go up. And this is my favorite breakfast spot. Ni hao. Hey, this one, one. Oh, this is gonna be so good. This is a Hangzhou specialty. It's basically like a, a super thin crepe with spring onions. She presses it down, you know, she presses it all the way down, makes it very thin, and then she gets a tofu and fills the crepe with the tofu and makes like a tofu crepe sandwich, you know, with spring onions. It's really good, I had it yesterday. Uh, uh, spice, spice, yeah, spice. And here we go. Ooh, it looks a little spicy, this one. <sighs> Man, it's almost like a panini, right? So it's been pressed together. You got the tofu in the middle, you have this nice sauce, you know, the spring onion throughout, you can actually see the spring onion through the crepe. Mmm. Wow. That's the last Still really hot. Oh, but I like it like that. But, I mean, this is how they eat it, right? They always eat everything hot. So I didn't just get this, I also got a wonton soup. That's really hot, so I'm gonna wait for that. I'm gonna finish this, then I'll drop on that. Mmm. It's a little sweet, with a contrast with the spicy sauce. They also have another, like, sweet sauce on top, too. Mmm, but the spring onion. So good, so fresh. And they have like hot sauce here, right? I'm gonna try a little bit. Oh. 
That's not hot sauce. That's like straight up chilies. Watch. I don't need that. Anymore. This is like so blue heaven. In every Chinese restaurant, they always have a trash can right next to your table. So you just go like this, toss it. Whoa, never gonna jump on these wontons. They're just so hot. Way too hot. I'm just gonna grab one. These are almost like the, the slippery ones. Like good, dense piece of pork right in the middle. Then you have a nice wonton and like just slides down your throat so quick. It's gone. Wow. And they give you a lot. Easy like 12 different wontons in here. They also have some more spring onions, a few more vegetables, super light. You know, I never thought I was gonna be eating wonton for breakfast every day. As I seen them do it here, like literally everybody's doing that or they're having like noodles or they're having shalambao. I mean, it's just like, this is part of eating breakfast in China. And you know, a lot of carbs obviously, but you need carbs to fill you up in the morning so you can have energy. Mm. The broth is just way too hot. The wontons are fine. You gotta let them just cool down a little bit. Yeah, as you can see, I, I had basically carb, carbs, carbs, carbs. That's all I've had. <laughs> now before I end this, I'm gonna get some of that chili sauce. Just a tiny bit of chili right there. Mm. Damn. I mean, it's hot. Like, way too much. Mm. But the most amazing part about going, eating the way I'm doing it today, is that you're really eating with locals. There's no tourists here, none. Every single person here is from Hong Joe. Or has come from somewhere in China, but yeah, you won't find any Westerners here. And that's the way it should be because the good food is not all the tourist art. Mm. Last three. They're so easy to eat. Whew, what a big breakfast. A tofu sandwich and the wontons cost me 15. The thing before that two and the thing before that six, so 23, so under three bucks, you have this big, big breakfast. And, oh, the, so this is open actually. Okay, we're in a little museum now. This shows you what the city used to look like when it was the capital of China. So you have, you know, the gates, you have these huge streets, you have temples, you have housing, you have the hills, you have, you know, obviously the farmland outside. Then over here to the left we have a little like reenactment, right? And then we over here we have some beautiful paintings. The museum's pretty cool and uh, it's free. Should definitely go in there, learn a little bit about the history. You know, this was the capital of China. That's why it was it was like the biggest city in the world for a good amount of time. I think there was like two million people. Marco Polo actually visited and he couldn't believe it when he got here because it was the biggest city in the world at that time. And yes, yeah, so we're gonna walk right back through everything we just came from and go straight to my apartment, grab my bags, and go straight to the train station. When you travel here in China on the bullet train, this is how you have to do it. You have to buy your tickets online. If you can't do it yourself, ask somebody to do it for you. You use your credit card, and you have a reservation number. When you get to the train station, you have to show your reservation number and your passport. Then, you get your ticket. I highly suggest being there about an hour early, an hour before your train, just so you're safe. So if it takes, you know, 30 minutes in traffic, leave an hour and a half before your train. It's the best thing to do because if not, you might hit some traffic, you might get there late, and you do not want to risk it. You want to get on your train, and there's security checks, etc. So enough talking, let's get my bags and go to the train station. And that's my apartment. Have to quickly pack up everything, check, double check, triple check, and go. I'll see you in a few minutes. Alright, bags in, DD here, let's get in the car, Hangzhou East, Whew. too many bags. We're a little behind schedule. My plan was to leave at 10 a.m. because my train's at 11.40 and I wanted to have time, you know, in case there's traffic, you know, go through security, get your ticket, etc. We left at 10.20 because I had to double and triple check all my stuff, you know, make sure I have my passport, laptop, and camera. 
but everything's fine. We're almost there. We just passed through the downtown area, as you see. You know, lots of skyscrapers. There's six million people in Hangzhou, 22 million people around the city, which is crazy. There's 150 cities in China with at least one million people, and I can only name like maybe 12 cities, like the 12 that I know, or the six that I've been to, and 12 that I know, right? Um, but yeah, we're almost at the station. Once we get there, we have to go through security. Whew, let's get there. So we made it to the train station. As you can see, it is huge. It looks like an airport here. This is a really big train station. Lots of people. Uh, luckily, it's not as bad as Shanghai. Shanghai, it's like 50,000 people at any given moment just like walking around. Here, it's a lot less. So as soon as I go in, I have to have my passport on hand. Got it? Oh, wow. Well. Here we go. Like I said before, there's always gonna be an issue. So I can't go through here, can't even my passport get through here. I have to have my ticket, so she said I have to go downstairs to pick up my ticket. Luckily I'm here about an hour early and I have time to do this. So we found that the escalator is downstairs, we made a quick right, and then here we are. This is where everybody's buying their tickets, refunds, and then here it says foreigners. So if you're a foreigner, you're getting this line, international passenger ticket, just get this line and wait. Uh, so many people, so many people. I mean, it's never ending. This line is not bad. I mean, it's like 10, 12 people. Luckily, I already bought my ticket, so all I have to do is get my passport, my reservation number, and I get my ticket. But yeah, this is like, this is China. China, there's always lines everywhere you go. Xie Xie. It's in the waiting room. And the find number 15, B. Perfect. If you're going in business class, just go to that window right there, and you don't have to make the lines. I got my ticket, got my passport, right? Now I have to go back upstairs, exactly where I came from, go through that security, and then we'll be in the station. So now you know, when you come to Hangzhou, come pick up your tickets at the bottom level. So don't let the DD or the taxi drop you up upstairs, because there's no point, you have to come downstairs, get your ticket. Ni hao. Oh. Oh. Throw all your bags on here. We made it through security, now we're walking through the station. As you can see, what a station. Like, easily 50 feet in height, maybe more, probably like 100 feet in height. I mean, this is a ginormous station. And uh, yeah, it's super like futuristic, modern. The second level, you can see all the restaurants up there. Tons of restaurants. Bottom is all retail, but super spacious. I mean, they really know how to make a good train station here in China. Like they've all been so beautiful and advanced like this. I feel like I'm in a, a spaceport. Straight up, like China is so amazing. I love China. Oh, and something I gotta mention is that here on the bottom, there's like these arrows and I'll tell you ticketing, you know, ticket check over here, west exit, toilet, drink water, east exit, ticket check, drinking water. I mean, it basically tells you where everything is. So in case you find yourself and you're like, oh, where's the bathroom, just look down. You can see these arrows and they point you in the right direction. China, so smart. Ni hao. Xie So if you travel business class, there's a business class lounge, right? Like I said before, business hours are between 5.20 a.m. and then 10.30 p.m. Pretty cool, let's see it. Nice. You guys are so nice. <laughs> you wanna do it too? <laughs> okay. Yo ma. Yo ma. <laughs> <laughs> the girls here are super nice. But as you can see, it's super sleek business class lounge. Here they have snacks, they have like tea, orange juice, you got water. So I mean, they basically just give you a few extra perks so you can just chill. We also some green tea. Probably get one of these snacks here and take it with me. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> the women here are extremely friendly. It's so funny. But I got myself like a, it looks like a ton of different like fruits and vegetables. I've never tried it before. It's like a Chinese brand. So let's open this up. Okay. Let's see what this is. Oh man. <laughs> you got some of the paper on me. All right. Mm. It's like lychee. Oh, it's so good. Mmm, nice and cold. All the women working here are like, <laughs> they're like in love with me for sure. It's so funny, they're all just like. 
But yeah, we're boarding uh, in the next 10 minutes, so they're just gonna let me know. When you come in, you basically give them a passport, give them your ticket, and then they'll call you 10 minutes before the line's ready to board. So you just walk out of here and go straight to your to your queue or to your, like, I guess your gate, right? Shay <laughs> Shay. Uh, yeah, bye bye. The women here at the Business Class Lounge are amazing. This girl's like literally walking me to my gate. Can you believe that? I mean, it's super like exclusive treatment here. I feel like a celebrity. This lady literally walked me straight to my gate. She's so funny. I think we're boarding though. I think we're. And she's gonna actually get me in the front of the line. So I'm cutting the line here. Big line. So now you know if you go in business class, go to the business class lounge, chill there. When you're done, they literally will walk you to your gate and get you through first. So it's like priority access or priority checking. I wish I knew that earlier. I took it twice already. I didn't do that. I just like went straight to the gate and waited. Wow. All right, we're here. We're waiting for the train. We depart in exactly eight minutes. That's how it works here in China. They don't let you on the platform until you're like about to leave. So the train gets here, you get on, you have like literally two minutes to get on, get in, sit down, go. So on your ticket, you see your cart number, right? So mine's three. And on the floor right here, you can see three. And then over there, they have six. Over there, they have some other ones, but this is number three, that's business class. Over there should be first class. Business class is the best, though. And this is my spot, AF. This is actually a way bigger business class. The last two I've been on, They've been like only five seaters. This is like, so eight, so what's that? <laughs> Can't do math right now. 24 seats here, 24 seats. And yeah, AF, you got your TV here. You have your, you know, your little tray table here. You can extend to like go all the way down, like flat lay beds, right? It's basically like being in business class on a plane. This was cool though, this is nice. We just left Hangzhou East. I'm excited, I love this thing. Like it just like, the whole time looking out, seeing all the skyscrapers, all the green, this city is really just beautiful. You can see so many skyscrapers, like easily a few thousand buildings with 20 stories or more. I mean, it's just like an ever ending amount of buildings. What? And yeah, in case you didn't know, the bullet train is the fastest way to get around China. They started their first one, I think, in 2008, and now they have thousands of bullet trains, thousands of lines connecting almost every city. From Shanghai to Beijing, I think it's like four hours. From Shanghai to Hangzhou and Hangzhou to Shanghai is 45 minutes, so really, really fast. It goes 350 kilometers per hour, which is roughly 217 miles per hour. Right now we're going 258 and we're speeding up, we're speeding up, we're speeding up. You know, we're gonna get to certain points where we get to 350, but then we slow down because we're already getting there. You know, usually like 20 minutes before we're getting to Shanghai, we we'll start slowing down really fast. Uh, yeah, and uh, business class is, you know, affordable. 210 for 45 minutes. So you're talking about like $32 for 45 minutes. Super comfortable. You got a place to put your bags. You have a super relaxing chair. Like you got leather, you can stretch out. You can, if you're hungry, you can open this up and eat. They give you some crackers and some water. I mean, basically, it's a short, short route, you know? So if it was like a long route, I'm sure they give you food. And uh, yeah, as you can see, a lot of people sleeping, reading, chilling. And the best part for me is these huge windows because you really enjoy the bullet train ride. You know, you enjoy the experience. Oh, here we go. Okay. Shisha. So there's like some white piece. And here, a gift for business seat. So we have a table just like on an airplane. It folds open. And then here we're gonna open our little gift. The gift for business seat. It's probably just a lot of crackers and cookies. We'll rip this open. Yep. You got some chocolate here, raisins, peanuts, biscuits, gummies, braised beef. I don't know. Maybe I try this one. Let's, let's open one of them. Okay. Alright. I'm good with that. I need water. It needs dehydrated. For some reason, it was really cold the first few days of the trip. Now it's freaking hot. 
Summer begins in like early April here in China. We are in South China. Considered South China for me, it's not really South China, it's like Central China, but there's a river that divides like North and South. It's really hot, so I recommend coming to China, I'd say between October and March. Something like that. That's when I actually recommend going to like Europe. Europe, I'd say September to May. Here, it's like October to March, just because of the weather. You know, you want to get in like colder weather, the hotter it gets, the worse it is. You don't want to be walking around in the heat. I personally can't stand walking around cities in the heat. I mean, I'm from Miami, but I really like like a little bit of a breeze. And yeah, we're literally almost there. Uh, we have about 15 minutes to go. That's like the fastest thing ever, 45 minutes. I mean, by the time you sit down, open your thing, drink some water, relax, chill, you're almost there. And if you were gonna drive between these two cities, it would take three to five hours. Bullet train is the best. If you have some time and you wanna really relax, make this thing a real bed. So press the button, extend all the way. Watch, we're gonna go all the way down. It's gonna take a while. And you don't have to do like the full bed, you can just go medium or just back to normal. And just like that, we're back in Shanghai. 45 minutes, it's so fast. We were going like 290 the whole time. We had to actually stop at one station for one second, literally for one minute. Some people got off, people got on, and we kept going. And here we are, Shanghai Hongqiu Railway Station. I have to go to the back of this train and get my bags. What an epic morning it's been. We started off with a Hangzhou style breakfast. So we had like a Chinese flatbread, really crispy, yummy, then a sweet biscuit. Then we had a tofu sandwich, which is the best and only found in Hangzhou. Then we had a wonton soup, really filling only three US dollars, three US dollars for that entire breakfast. Then we traveled between Hangzhou and Shanghai via the bullet train, 350 kilometers per hour in business class and it only took 45 minutes. That is the best way to travel between these two cities because if you drove, it would take like three to five hours with traffic. Don't do that. Travel on the bullet train. I suggest if you're ever traveling in China, always go with the bullet train. It's the best way to travel unless you're gonna travel really, really far like Shanghai to Xi'an or something and that might be easier to fly, right? But yeah guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure somewhere around the world. Peace.